Okay, and just want to show something that I think is actually quite useful and I didn't know this until someone actually showed me how to do this. So I'm in Blender, uh, I'll select everything with A, hit the delete key to delete everything, then you hit 1 on the numeric keypad to go into front mode. Do a shift A, add a curve Bezier, or Bezier, not sure how to pronounce it, there you go. Uh, I'll do a rotate around X of 90, so RX 90, there you go. So that's my little curve there. I'll do a tap to go into edit mode, so you can see your curve with your handles. I'll just select one of those points, one of those vertices. Hit E to extrude, R to rotate. E to extrude, R to rotate, E to extrude, R to rotate, let's go in that direction, E to extrude, R to rotate, let's go back there, E to extrude, E to extrude, uh, E to extrude, R to rotate, E to extrude, let's say I want to end up somewhere there, it looks like a little like a fish, doesn't it? So I'll hit the tab key, so that's, that's my curve, now I also want to close it. So I want to close this curve. So what you can do, you can go to your, what is it called? Object Data Properties tab here. And there's an option here, if I can find it, I know it's here somewhere, probably on the geometry. E no, it's not on the geometry, where is it? It's hiding here somewhere, it's hiding here somewhere. I know it's here somewhere. Start and end, no, it's not there. No, it's not there. Active spline, yeah, there we go. Under active spline, it says cyclic, and there's a little tick box here. You, you tick it, you see, and now it's actually uh, closed. So that actually makes the, the, the curve close, makes it go all the way around. If you hit the tab key again, uh, I, can, uh, I can make this, uh, this little thing go away by rotating this a little bit more. So there you go. Now, that all works, okay? So, now the thing is, and this is like the issue, uh, say you go back into edit mode and you do an A to select all your vertices. Cool. Then going back into these uh, object data properties, there's an option here to extrude. So let's extrude. Okay, so you get a bit of like a 3D fish going on there. That's all nice and well. But if you then hit tap and you go back into front mode, you can't see the thing anymore. Because you're looking at like the, you're looking at the thing edge on and it's, the edges completely disappear. So like, where is my object right now? So you have to like click and drag to actually see your object again. Now there's a trick here where you can actually fill these areas. You want to go back into your, into your data, uh, into your da object data properties tab. Then there is a 3D option here. You see under shape 3D, there's the fill mode. It says fill mode is full, but you can change that to uh, to full, no, to I thought, I thought there was an option called both here. Where is the option both? I don't see the option both anymore. Ah, uh, where is it? It's hiding here somewhere. 2D fill, ah, here you go. You need to go to 2D, not 3D, 2D Marco. So go to 2D and then change the fill mode to both. If you now hit the tab key, and the tab key again, or you go like, you do one in front mode, there you go, you've got your fishy. <laughs> I don't know what it looks like, but it's kind of like a fish. So remember, so remember, it's still a curve, and the nice thing right now is like, if it's still a curve, I can simply change my fishy really quickly. So G, move it around, uh, clickety-click, G, move it around, R to rotate maybe, uh, this one, uh, G, or uh, G, move it around, there you go, R to rotate. Is it R to rotate? Okay. Tab key, and it looks a little bit different. So it's a very easy way to actually uh, still keep your curves there, make it a completely filled uh, 3D object, but still being able to change those curves, which I think is really cool. So it's on the shape, 2D option, and change it from, I think, one of those options to both. That's the idea. Have fun there. Bye-bye.